Okay, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It should be a familiar verse to you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The title of the message is, What Can the Book Do for You? What Can the Book Do for You? What can the book do for you? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. And Father, I'm so thankful that today there are still people that are still searching out for you and people that are still looking for the truth. And Father, I just pray, oh Lord, that you just show us, Lord. I pray that we'll just open up our hearts. And I pray that you use Pastor Jay and I pray that you use them and speak through them, Lord. And I pray that we'll be able to apply it to our lives and think about it and meditate upon it and just keep on living how you will want us to live according to your word, Lord. Father, thank you for everything you've given us. I pray also in Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. There are many slogans out there. You know, what can something do for you? Because people need something, and they need something or someone to do something for them. And we have the book of all books, Amen. Yes. the book, yes. monarch of all books. That's the King James Bible. Then what can... This book, King James Bible, do for you. Number one thing is that many Christians neglect the book. Whether you admit it or not, you neglect the Word of God many days. What does neglect mean? According to the Webster's Dictionary, neglect means to give little attention or respect to. Which means that if you give little attention to the Word of God, you have been neglecting the Word of God. Whether you like it or not, you are a neglector. Because unless you are fully immersed in the Word of God on a daily basis, you're neglecting it. Unless you give all your attention and respect to the Word of God, you are neglecting the Word of God. Which means I myself have been neglecting the Word of God. And what does that mean? I have been sinning. You have to understand that neglecting the Word of God does not mean, you know, it's something you have option where I could just read or not read because Bible has a command, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. Amen. Which means you and I have to study the Word of God, which means we cannot neglect the Word of God. If you neglect the Word of God, you cannot have a normal, right, pure, clean, holy Christian life. The reason you're full of sin in your life, the reason you don't have joy in your life, the reason you're not happy, the reason there's always unsatisfactory feeling in your life is because you're neglecting the Word of God. Many times when you neglect something, that part of it becomes smaller and smaller in your life. Imagine if you're a parent, if you neglect one of the child, say you have two kids, and you neglect one of the child, what's going to happen? They become smaller and smaller. They become less and less important to you. When it comes to the Word of God, it has become less and less and less important to you. It's funny because when you first got saved, you were all gung-ho. You wanted to read the Word of God. You wanted to study the Word of God. You wanted to make sure that you can tell others about the truth that you just found. But as time passed by, what happens? Your life gets in the way. People gets in the way. Your job gets in the way. Many things are getting in the way, which means it is very possible that at your current state, many of you are neglecting the Word of God just by percentage that we see in the Word of God. I use it all the time. Twelve spies went to the promised land. Ten of them came back with bad report. Only two of them came with good report, which is Caleb and Joshua. And we're not talking about just nobody's here. 
they were leaders of the tribes. They're like up there, you know, and they come back with bad report, which means one out of six sitting here most likely have not really read read the Word of God or studied the Word of God during this week or during the past week. So one out of six, and I think it's a pretty comparable percentage, and I think this is a percentage that works pretty well. If there are 60 people here, 50 of you probably didn't spend too much time in the Word of God, just normal. But why is it that you have to be that 50? Why do you have to be that 10? Always, always don't do anything for the Word of God and don't spend time in the Word of God, don't have relationship with the Word of God, and at the end of the day, bring bad reporting, get scared of everything the world's you know, sending your way, everything you know, the devil sending your way, every temptation that flesh is you know, trying to commit, make you commit, and then you do it and you fall into those temptations. Why? Because you neglect one of the most important part of your Christian life, which is the Word of God. If Word of God hasn't been important to you, or if you haven't really thought about Word of God, then you have been neglecting the Word of God. You are a neglector. Just say it, you know. Just say it to yourself. Man, I've been neglecting the Word of God. I'm a neglector, right? As much as the word sounds very strong, as much as the word sounds offensive, sometimes in order for you to change, you have to admit who you are. You have to admit that you're wrong. You have to admit that you're at fault. You have to admit that you're short of, you know, everything. You have to admit that you're like a dirt. You have to admit that you're less than nothing. You have to admit that you're just a sinner saved by grace. You have to admit that you can't do anything on your own. Because a lot of times people will say, I, me, the big me, can change the course of my own. I mean, did that really work out for you? Especially in Christian walk, when you decide to do something and when you think that you could do it, that's when you can't do it. That's when the devil and the world and the flesh gets in the way. That's that's why you have to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you have to go to him. That's where you find your strength. I can't read the word of God. I can't study the word of God because I'm too busy with my life. Really, were you busier than George Mueller? We all know George Mueller. He ran the orphanage. He was a man of prayer. He prayed like three, four hours on a daily basis. And what does he think about studying and reading the Word of God? Is reading the Bible a necessary part of your day, or does it have a low priority in your life? Ask that question. Is reading the Bible, studying the Bible, a necessary part of your day, or does it have a low priority in your life? George Mueller, after having read the Bible through 100 times with increasing delight. So after he read 99 times, he was so happy. But when he read it the 100th time, he was happier. Made this statement. I look upon it as a lost day when I have not had a good time over the Word of God. Friends often say, I'm sure your friends, your family, your spouses say the same thing. I have so much to do, so many people to see. I cannot find time for scripture study. Perhaps there are not many who have more to do than I. Think about George Mueller. For more than half a century, I have never known one day when I had not more business than I could get through. For four years, I have had annually about 30,000 letters, and most of these have passed through my own hands. Then as pastor of a church with 1,200 believers, great has been by care. Besides, I have had charge of five immense orphanages. Also at my publishing depot, the printing and circulating of millions of tracts, books, and Bibles. But I have always made it a rule never to begin work until I have had a good season with God and his word. Think about it. This guy, I guarantee, more than anybody sitting here, more than anybody listening, had more things to do in his life on a daily basis. I mean, are you leading 1,200 believers, right? 
Are you in charge of orphanages? I mean, big orphanages. Are you handling publishing of tracts and everything else? But he said, it is a rule never to begin work until I have had a good season with God and his word. The blessing I have received has been wonderful. Amen. The reason your life is not as wonderful, you know, as holiday season comes, you know, they always talk about it's a wonderful life. The reason it's not a wonderful life currently for you is because why? You do not have a good season with God and his word on a daily basis. Then what can the book do for you? Nothing. If you don't spend time in the book, what can the book do for you? Nothing. It's like this. Someone had a telescope. You guys know what telescope is, right? If you don't, ask Nathan. In case his birthday is a big boy, he knows what telescope is. Telescope. If a man looks through his telescope, he sees worlds beyond, right? You get to see some stuff. I mean, I don't want to be up there in space, but man, you could see some stuff. But if he looks at his telescope, he does not see anything but that. So if you look through the telescope, you see some stuff, right? But if you just look at the telescope, you don't see anything but the telescope. The Bible is a thing to be looked at, looked through. Amen. I mean, looked through to see that which is beyond. Again, the Bible is a thing to be looked through to see that which is beyond. But most people only look at it, and so they see only the cover. Many times, this is all you see, right, at home. Even if you put it in a place, you have to put it in a place to see, but many times you don't even see this. You only see it on Sunday, right? Right? How many of you guys actually just like a, you know, to see world beyond looking through a telescope actually look through this book? I mean, from cover to cover. Because some people like a certain verse and they only go there. They only go one book. No, it doesn't work like that. I mean, how many of you actually go from cover to cover? God is not asking you and I to read the Bible like George Mueller a hundred times over. No. He just wants us to study on a daily basis. Again, just unlike other versions out there where it says just do your best to read the Word of God, then, you know, if my best today is to read, you know, one word, that's my best. My best is not able to do anything today because I'm so tired. Then you have excuses. But the King James Bible clearly says, it's a command, study. Amen. No excuses. It's imperative. If you don't read and study the Word of God, you're committing sin. Man, you and I, you know, we do have a lot of sin to confess to God for and get right with the Lord for, but this is something probably happens on a daily basis. I mean, do you truly think that you have put the Word of God as your highest priority where you get delight out of it every time you read through it. Sometimes you read the Word of God and it's such a drag, right? Sometimes you read it to fall asleep. There's no delight in that. That's not really having, you know, fun, excitement when doing something. Do you truly have delight when you read the Word of God? Because Word of God is a mirror. And you hear it all the time, this comparison. Mirror will not lie. Do you guys agree? A I mean, mirror will not lie. If you look at the mirror, it shows exactly how it is. Right. You can't Photoshop the mirror, right? You can't get bigger or smaller in front of the mirror. Yeah. Mirror shows you exactly how you look like. And you cannot blame the mirror for what it shows you, right? I mean, if you see your mirror, you know, you let yourself go a little bit, right? And you've gotten a little bigger than you want it to be. 
or you're going to start blaming the mirror. Hey, why are you making me look fat today, right? You, know? you can't. You cannot blame the mirror for what it shows you. Neither can you blame the book. You cannot blame the Word of God for what it's showing you. Yes. Your terrible state that you're in right now, whether you're saved or unsaved. And especially if you're unsaved, the Word of God says you're on your way to hell. That's your state. You can't blame the book. You got to look at yourself. In a mirror, who do you see? You see yourself, not someone else. With many things in the world, you look and you see someone else. You compare yourself to someone else many times. That's where you fall into many traps and sin. But when it comes to the mirror, you see yourself, not someone else. When you see the Word of God, you see yourself. You're not seeing someone else. I mean, when you read the word, you know, be holy for I am holy, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil, right? I mean, it's you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that brother and sister, you know, I seen them do some stuff, you know, you know, this is for them. You know, oh, yeah, they're committing all these sins here, right? You know, no, it's you. Amen. Just like the mirror, you see yourself in the mirror through the word of God, you could see yourself. And we have a perfect mirror here. Yes. Perfect mirror. You know, three, three times in the word of God says this, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35, Luke 21, 33, and Mark 13, 31. Who's talking? Lord Jesus Christ is talking. Then, if, if the Bible omits, eliminates, you know, gets rid of what the Lord is saying, then that makes the Lord a liar. Right. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. If you have NIV, NSB, ESB, all the bunch of, you know, versions out there, you have a version that makes Jesus Christ a liar. Because they have missing verses many places, right? Acts 8, 27, Matthew 17, 21, 18, 11, 23, 14, you know, Mark 7, 16, 944, 946. I mean, these, these are some of the verses that our Lord said it directly. Why wouldn't preserve the word of God? Why wouldn't a Bible preserve exactly what the Lord said? I mean, don't tell me this gibberish that, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's no reason. If he says every word should be there, then every word should be there. Yes. Right. Then if your Bible does not have a, every word of the Bible, then it's a devil's Bible. Yes. It's a liar, Amen. right? Then what happens? If you have a broken mirror, it gives false image. NAV, RSB, NASB, they're all broken mirrors. That's why you look at it, it's broken. You are horrible. You're on your way to hell. But he's saying that you're okay, right? It messes up your doctrine, right? You know, I mean, we're in the period, you know, church age, saved by grace only. Amen. But now, because of broken mirror, you're looking at Old Testament salvation, or you're looking at tribulation salvation, you're looking at all the transitional time of salvation. Amen. You're like, man, am I really saved? You know, I haven't had a good day today. So I have to, let me accept Christ again. I mean, how many of you guys actually had to go through that? I went through it because no one ever taught me the word of God. I'm like, okay, okay, guys, let's have a sinner's prayer again. It's like, okay. And then you have a horrible day, you know. You get angry, you sin, you know, you fall into some temptation. Will Lord truly accept me to heaven? You know, I didn't get to... You know, repent of my sin and confess my sin today. I mean, people get messed up. I was messed up. And many people are still messed up. Why? They're, they're looking at the broken, false image in the mirror. Then, if you're using anything other, if, you don't, if you're believing anything other than the King James Bible, then you're constantly looking at the false image. Then you'll never get right. 
I'm not saying that you can't get saved. You can get saved, but it gets more difficult. Oh, yes. It gets more confusing. Yes. Then if you had any doubts about having the right mirror, then get rid of it now. There's only one true mirror. That's King James Bible. Amen. And don't just believe it because I'm saying it. Study it. Weigh the evidence, yeah. right? Look at the verses that's missing and study for yourself. Why are these verses missing in the other versions, right? And then some people will bring up like, what about New King James Bible, right? New King James and King James Bible have over, you know, 2,000 places that are just different. More than that. I mean, it's different. Yes. If me and her have over 2,000 difference, we're not the same. That's right. Okay? Right? You know, from head to toe. You know? If me and brother over there, you know, if we have like over even 10 differences, yeah. we're not the same. That's right. That's right. Even one difference, we're not the same. That's true. So don't fall into this, you know, traps out there. Amen. That's why, what can the book, what can the book do for you? You have to have the right book. If you have the so-called wrong books out there, it's going to destroy you. Yes. What can mirror show other things, right? It helps you, pointers to groom. Right? It shows you some grooming parts that you have to do. Right. Man, you know, sometimes you have to shave. You yes. look at the mirror. I mean, good for you if you could shave without the mirror, right? I know that's why you have a lot of blood spots, you know, on your face. <laughs> but you use the mirror to shave, brush your hair, you know, I mean, pluck your eyebrows, man and woman, right? You brush your teeth, yeah. right? You wash up. And it starts what? At the beginning of the day, usually, right? You know, before you go to school, before you go out, you know, before you go to job, what do you do? You go to the mirror and you groom yourself. You get ready, right? Then, same thing with the Word of God. It should start at the beginning of the day. You look at the Word of God and you groom yourself, right? You get yourself ready for the day. Because I know if you have to be well-dressed for your work, for your school, for whatever function or job it has to be, you will definitely get yourself ready. You get your nice clothes. You get yourself, you know, look presentable. However, how many of you guys actually start the day with the Word of God and groom yourself for the day, get yourself ready for the day? If, you're, if you brush your teeth, you should read the Word of God. If you wash your face, you should read the Word of God. If you use a bathroom, use the Word of God. If you do anything in the beginning of the day to get yourself ready for the day, you should do the same with the Word of God. Then you and I have to kind of look back at our life. Starting this morning, have I, have I did the same the way I try to present myself at church today with the Word of God? Did I put as much emphasis as how I wanted to look in front of people today, in front of God today, as with the Word of God. Man, I guarantee you, not many people would have put, or has put, or will put, same effort right. or more. Yeah. But you have to. I mean, wouldn't you want to look good spiritually as well as physically? Yeah, amen. I mean, it's more important. Yes. You know, there's a, it's a balance. And something about that mirror is that you cannot do it in darkness. Right? You can't. Same thing with the Word of God. You can't be doing it in darkness. You, don't try to say, I read the Word of God in total darkness, right? You know, like, you know, before I go to sleep, and I sleep with the Word of God. I mean, you don't open it. You don't read it. It's just next to you, right? I mean, in total darkness, you can't see the mirror. Right. So you have to get out of darkness. If you're living in sin, you have to get out of it. I mean, before you're going to get help from the Word of God, which is the light, you have to get out of darkness. 
You can't be living in darkness and trying to be like, I'm going to be blessed by the word of God. It's like this. Someone says, today, I'm going to go and rob a bank. Lord, bless me. Today, I'm going to go murder someone, Lord. Bless me through the word of God. It doesn't work like that. You have to get out of it. You know, you have to get out of it. Yes. You have to get out of your darkness in order to be blessed by the word of God. Truly. It's like this. Okay. I smoke every single day. I do drugs every day. Why isn't the word of God blessing me? Right. I mean, it's, it's a farce, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, I go to Vegas every day and, you know, try to earn money for the Lord, you know? Why isn't the Lord blessing me? Why am I just losing, you know, every single time? I go to, you know, all these, you know, casinos out here. And I read my Bible. I read actually more when I'm at the casino, you know. And the hotel, I read like, you know, five chapters instead of, you know, one chapter on a daily basis, right? Because I want the Lord to bless me more. I mean, you got to look at yourself in the mirror, right? You cannot do it in darkness. If you want the book to do something for you, you have to do it in light. If you're in your sinful state, you have to get out of it. That's why when it comes to the word of God, you cannot run away from it. In order to get help from the mirror, what do you have to do? You have to get close to it. Yes. You have to get close to it. I mean, if I have a, I don't know, maybe I was painting stuff because I'm a painter, right? Yes. And then I, you know, I put something on, I accidentally, you know, I touched my face, and there were like brown and black ink. And from this distance, I can't really see because it's pretty minute. As I get closer and closer, you know, I see some spots. And when I'm really close, I could clearly see it, and I could do something about it. When it comes to the Word of God, you can't run away from it. It can't be far from you. It should be like right next to you and closest to you, and you do something with it. Without that... The book cannot do anything for you. If you want help from the Word of God, if you want delight from the Word of God, if you want to be sanctified from the Word of God, John 17, 17, you have to get closer to the Word of God. And that's something that you and I, as a Christian, who have been neglecting the Word of God because we haven't put it as the number one priority in our life on a daily basis, then you have to change. Because the Lord requires full obedience. In order to give the Lord full obedience, you have to obey Him every single day. And that part of it is studying the Word of God and starting your day out with the Word of God. Would you, if you are a married couple, would you tell your wife or husband, I'm going to be faithful to you for 364 days. But one day I'm not going to be faithful. Would that work? I mean, it's not going to work. But you're telling God, God, I'm going to be faithful to you like 300 days out of 365 days. I'm going to be faithful to you maybe one out of seven days in a week. Man, you've been an unfaithful Christian. Think about it. If you and your husband and wife commit to each other for 365 every day until death do you guys apart, why don't you show that? And why don't you do that with the Word of God? Amen. Why don't you do that with the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. You know, sometimes you and I don't understand that each time you commit sin, each time, you know, you go against the Word of God, you know, you're committing adultery. If you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, right, you're bride. Yes. Bride of the Lamb. Then each time you are loving the world, the devil, and the flesh, you're committing your adultery against your bride, the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's happening on a daily basis. Would you want to be labeled a cheater? No. I mean, who wants to be labeled a cheater? Right? I wouldn't. I would never want to be called a cheater. Right? Right? But spiritually speaking, you and I are cheaters. Amen. 
And you have to admit it. Yes. If you don't admit it, you never get right. Yeah. I mean, if the Lord's convicting your heart that, man, you've sinned against me over and over, and then you're neglecting the word of God, and he's leading you to commit adultery against me, then you have to wake up now. If you don't, then you're going to die. Or if the Lord comes back early, you're going to be going up as a cheater. Man, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ, I do not want to go through that judgment knowing that, you know, the Lord's going to say, you know what, have you been faithful? I mean, the Lord's almighty God. Probably he could spit out every single synonym, every single word in every single language. That means cheater, unfaithful. Man, man, that's a scary part to yes. think about, scary day to think about. Then you have to get right with the Lord. If you use the right book, and if you truly want the book to do something for you, then many times book can produce something for you. And number one thing is what? The book produces supernatural new birth. You and I are here because of the Word of God, Amen. right? Yes. Because of this incorruptible Word, you and I got saved, yeah. right? So the book can save your soul. You Think yes. about it. If you're not saved, if you don't know where you're going today, this book can save your soul. Yes, sir. Think about it. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no one, not one, for the wages of sin is death. But the fear of unbelieving, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is second death. But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So the, definitely the book can save your soul. The right book, right? And book can help you grow spiritually. Yes, sir. Amen. Right? You want to grow? Right? You don't want to stay the same, right? right. You want to grow? Right. Get in the book. Many days we're weak. We don't have strength. Amen. The book can build you up yes, and sir. give you str spiritual strength. And book can keep you clean. Man, I, I, I don't want to be dirty. To tell the truth, man, I don't want to. I don't want to be dirty. That's right. I mean, I don't want. I don't want like dung on me, right? Dirt on me. No, I don't want this pollutants on me. I want to be clean. But good, the book can keep you clean, and the book can give you light and understanding. Right? If you want, if you want real understanding, you have to hit the book. You have to be in the book. And can you believe it? You say, man, I want to know the future. The book can show you the future. Man, the book can show you the future. There are many people out there blinded. They're in total darkness, right? They don't know what's going to happen, That's you know? Right. I mean, of course, you know, our life, we don't know what's going to happen exactly. But the book can show you future. And you have that book. What can this book do for you? It gives you life. It gives you strength. Again, it gives you understanding. It shows you future. It keeps you holy. Then what are you doing with this book? Is this your mirror on a daily basis? It has to be. If you see yourself in the mirror every single day, then you have to see this book every single day. You should see this book more than the mirrors that you see, the more than the time that you spend in front of the mirror. I think that's one of the gate. I mean, you could gauge yourself spiritually. Do I spend more time in the book or do I spend more time in just actual mirror, right? Because I think in the mirror, you're going to spend at least 30 minutes to an hour, maybe two hours if you have to do a lot of makeup or whatnot. You know, what do you spend more time on? Man, then, you know what? Starting today, okay, I'm spending more time in the Word of God. Something's going right, right? Then in the mirror. So start small. Start changing. Start yeah. making commitment to the Lord. 
and realize what you've done wrong in the past and get right with the Lord. Again, Lord is such a gracious Lord. He's not like you and me. He's very compassionate. If it was you, me, we all would have been dead. Yeah. You know, we've been unfaithful. You know, we pissed off the Lord all the time. Yeah. You know, but he has so much compassion and grace. Lord. Then do not take it for granted. Let not the day go by without you getting right with the Lord and making that right decision when it comes to the word of God. Let's pray.